Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this Thursday, March 17th. I'm Rose Duncan Cannon for worship and we are so pleased that you are joining us today for the service of prayer and reflection. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat at the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading comes from the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at the gate of his house lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you receive your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. In our reading, Jesus told the story of two men who live close in proximity, but whose lives could not have been more different. We are presented with contrast between riches and poverty, heaven and hell, compassion and indifference, inclusion and exclusion. This short story inter introduces us to an unnamed and an indifferent man and the poor man named Lazarus. Even though Lazarus was present outside the rich man's house day in and day out, the rich man ignored him and showed no compassion for
for his condition. Not only do the two men live near one another, but the timing of their deaths is within days of one another. When Lazarus died, he was immediately taken to heaven by the angels to Abraham. Shortly after this, the rich man also died and was buried. The rich man, however, did not go to heaven. Instead, he went to Hades, where he suffered great torment. By some means, the rich man was able to see Abraham in heaven, and surprisingly, he saw Lazarus at Abraham's side. The rich man was stunned, I'm sure. How could this be? Shouldn't he be the one at Abraham's side? The rich man called out to Abraham and begged him to send Lazarus to him with some water because he was suffering greatly. However, Abraham reminded the rich man that he had received many gifts and graces while he was on earth while Lazarus suffered. Even in his current state, the rich man is working from a great sense of privilege and entitlement. He wants the poor man to alleviate his suffering with a drop of water. What he asks of Lazarus is similar to what he could have done but never did. While it would be easy to attribute the rich man's situation to his economic status, something deeper is happening here. There is no condemnation of being rich per se. The condemnation is in not being sensitive to the needs of others. His fault had much more to do with his inability to treat Lazarus with compassion or to acknowledge his humanity and to respect his value as a child of God. Jesus makes the point clear that the rich man was uncaring and did not show compassion toward his fellow human being. I believe that Jesus wanted those around him, and yes, us, to understand that we always live in a time of grace with abundant opportunities for new beginnings. During his lifetime, the rich man had opportunities to love and care for someone sitting right outside his gate. This season of Lent reminds us of the opportunity to search our hearts and to identify those obstacles in our lives that prevent us from generosity and compassion. Today, many across the world will remember the life of St. Patrick known as the Apostle of Ireland. When Patrick was a teenager, he was brought to Ireland as a slave and suffered the cruelty of his condition for six years. In his slavery, he experienced a deep conversion. In his frequent moments of prayer and reflection, the good news of Jesus took root in his heart. And finally, he escaped and returned to his homeland with a strong desire to do the works of God. He began his studies for the priesthood and was ordained. And after a few years when he was ordained a bishop, he felt that God was calling him to return to Ireland as a missionary. With great love and commitment, he returned and had great success spreading the gospel. Today, we are invited to deepen our own commitment to doing the works of God, to love one another with the heart of God, and to show compassion to each sister, brother, and sibling we encounter along the way. Amen. Let us offer the prayers of our hearts to God. That this day may be holy, good, and joyful, we pray to you, O Lord. That we may offer to you our worship and our work, we pray to you, O Lord that we may strive for the well-being of all creation and for peace among the nations. We pray to you, O Lord, that in the pleasures and pains of life we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray to you, O Lord. Let us now commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God through Jesus Christ, 
who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, strong and mighty, Lord of hosts and King of glory, cleanse our hearts from sin. Keep our hands pure and turn over our minds from what is passing away so that at the last we may stand in your holy place and receive your blessing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of compassion, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have reconciled your people to yourself. As we follow his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>